to continue our development for the user interface with the web page, uh, user interface web page, and the web page is run on a server side of the IoT platform. Now we no look at the docu document T3, no thread device and web page and so on. So it's this one. Oh yes, I have already loaded it. It's in that one here. So in here we suppose that you have done the earlier exercise with the node red, so you know the basics of the node red. And uh, then again I'm explaining here that how to get this working. So opening all the nodes in this one view. Actually, this is like built from the several screenshots because you can't open all the nodes in the same view. So you can open only one node at a time, but I have like built this kind of picture. So you get this system working there and you Add in your IoT environment, you add new devices, sensor one, servo one, servo two. So sensors are the sensor devices creating events to the IoT platform so that there are new measurement values going in. And the servo devices are something, servo is with an electric motor and it's moving something. So it's reading the commands from the IoT platform. So in the IoT platform, you can create command messages. And these are with the MQTT protocol, then the servos here are like subscribing those command messages. And we don't really go into the details in here because we need to go forward up to the, how to create the web, web page in there. But the, there is that how you create the connections again and how you need to create the code for some function which is reading the data and by the data then sending out a command. So it's sending out the trigger command. for like a device one, which is the servo one, and then a trigger command for the device servo two. But now we go forward to the web, web, page, web page creation. Uh, yeah, how, how you get these, uh, let's say nodes created is that you copy, you can, you can import the nodes, you can publish the nodes for the others, and you can simply copy the nodes uh, the node is defined as an JSON formatted text. So when you create this kind of function in there, write this function. This is saved inside the this trigger function. And you can export it to your friends by, by exporting it. And the export file looks like this. It's in JSON format data, data. And that one you give to the friend and it, he gets the ex, or she gets the exactly the same functions. All right, then we go a little bit further. We go, we have yeah, earlier used that kind of microcontroller board. And then we go down to how to create the web page there. Wait a second. Yep, yeah, here. User interface created as a web page. So that's the subject. How to create a web page inside the node red. So I have given the flow, which is creating the whole application. At the flow, you can also like export and import as a JSON formatted data. 
and that's available as an as an separate file on my GitHub repo. And then it creates this kind of flow. And this is the web page flow here. So here is my control room web page. And then Yeah, just a moment. Yeah, that's the control room web page, which I'm defining. You see this one? I'm defining it directly as an HTML document. And inside that HTML document, I have the script which is JavaScript. And in there, I create local variables and so on. And I have functions inside this JavaScript code. Like we had also on that web server, which was running locally on the small microcontroller, creating the web page HTML. And inside the HTML, we had something in the JavaScript. Also in here, we have something in the JavaScript. So that's the, still about the same JavaScript or the HTML code. And inside that one, there is the JavaScript part. So, and how I get the information into this web page is that I get an IBM IoT node, which is an input node, and it is input type is a device event because I'm able to read the events from the uh, IoT platform. And this is device type is microcontroller sensor, and this is my M sensor one, and the information comes as a JSON formatted data. And the name of this node in the node red is IBM IoT app in. And just a moment. Yeah, I'm just creating out of this incoming string, I'm creating another string. And then I'm putting there a WebSocket, which is type listen on, part control room. And then I have an input node WebSocket where I'm then testing that what is the incoming request. So this is input node WebSocket. So I'm testing that what is the uh, incoming request when someone tries to uh, refresh the web page. And then I'm testing if there is on the payload or if there is on the incoming text, if there is master off, master on, servo one on, servo two on, and so on. So master off is commanding, just a moment. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that can be seen only on the, what is happening from here. I'll put to some outputs, I'll put the value triggers are false and message out is zero, message out, the other output message is then one.
No, no, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll show you a test environment how it is done. So, and if I, yeah, this is then inside the JavaScript on that web page, that if the payload master off, then I put both of the triggers false, and I'm saying sending this trigger then out. If the command is master on, I'm putting both of the triggers through and sending those out. If there is a servo one on, I'm just putting the trigger zero through. If there is servo two on, I'm putting the trigger one through. And so on. Um, yeah. And then I need to send those commands, those to the servos out of the IoT platform to the real servo devices. So the real servo devices, the motors are reading, they subscribe for the messages, the triggering messages. And then that's why I'm, I'm creating there, the, have created there that the device type is microcontroller servos and device ID is M01 and M02 and so on. And then now I'm defining that output node goes exactly to that servo one device. And then the, the type is device command. So that message goes then to the MQTT broker inside the IBM Watson IoT. And the MQTT broker there gets a message, which is a device command. And it is there with the device ID also servo one and then the real device servo one can subscribe for this command message so all the command messages are directly when the, the commands are created those are directed to the serve certain device with a certain device id and only that device can subscribe for that device command so no other device can read the commands to the other devices. And then, yeah, that is, it's, it, you need to build this before you understand totally that how it works. So, but that's an input node web socket where I'm testing that if there is a command master off, master on, and then that's the output web socket or output node where there is the HTML, uh, HTML document. And in that HTML document, there are the defined the buttons and then the, as a JavaScript function that what happens when you push the button on the web page. Right, and then I try to uh, start this demo application I have created here today in the morning. And the starting was running for tens of minutes on the IBM Watson IoT. So I'm not sure that why it is not starting that application fee for me, because all, all the other services for me in the IBM Watson cloud are running, but I can't get this, this one running there. So, but then in the end, it will, would then look like about the same as, as
then it would look about the same as this, this, this website in here in the mobile device and I could control the operation on the microcontroller by pushing the buttons the servo on, servo off and so on. But it is done through this cloud service, the IBM Watson IoT 